the divergence of a series. Here's a typical geometric series. For an infinite geometric series with a ratio between terms that's less than 1, the series converges to a over 1 minus r, where a is the first term and r is the ratio. So for this series, that's a half, or 0.5, over 1 minus 0.5. So that's 0.5 over 0.5, which is 1. Great, so this series converges to 1. Here's a question about this series, though. If you look at the individual terms in this series, what value do they approach? The terms are a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, and so on. So what value are these individual terms approaching? So for this question, we're interested in the limit of the individual terms, not their sum. So if we look at the individual terms, we have a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, the next would be 1 over 32, and 1 over 64, and after a while, 1 over 1024, and after a longer while, 1 over 2 to the hundredth power. These individual terms are getting smaller and smaller. They're getting halved each time. So their limit is 0. Right, they're approaching 0. The terms are 1 over 2 to the n. And in the limit as n goes to infinity, meaning we're looking at the nth term as n gets really, really big, this limit goes to 0. Now suppose we had some other series, the sum of the terms a n, and we know that the limit of the terms in this series, as n gets very large, approaches 1. Can you figure out if this series converges or diverges just from this information? Okay, let's look at this series, where the individual terms approach a value of 1. It'll be a1 plus a2 plus a3, and so on, but eventually all the terms will start looking like 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, and so on. So even if the first few terms, even if the first hundred or thousand terms, adds up to some number, that'll get overshadowed by the fact that you have infinitely many ones eventually. So this series will add up to infinity, or diverge. Right. Without even knowing anything else about the series, we know that it has to diverge. Why? Because this limit means that eventually all the terms will be very close to 1, and if we keep adding up 1s, the sum will diverge, going off to infinity. In fact, if the limit of the terms is anything except 0, it'll be impossible for the sum to converge. That's the basis of the term test. Let's write it down. Suppose we have a series, say, a1 plus a2 plus a3, etc. If the limit of terms is anything but zero, including undefined, then the series always diverges. If the limit of the terms is zero, then the series can converge, like the geometric series we looked at at the beginning, or it could also diverge. The term test is really a divergence test, because we can never use this test to make sure a series converges. To really know if something converges, we'll need to use other tests. In this tutorial, we'll introduce the comparison test, which can help you determine if a series converges or diverges. Let's say the heights of these bars represent the infinite series of b's, so b1, b2, b3, and so on. If you add up all the areas of the bars, you'll get the sum of the series. Now here are the terms of another infinite series, a's. And a1 is less than b1, a2 is less than b2, a3 is less than b3, and so on. Let's say that all the a's are less than the corresponding b's. Now suppose I tell you that the sum of the b's converges. What can you say about the sum of the a's? Okay, so we're saying that the sum of all the b's converges. Let's say if you add up all the b's from 1 to infinity, b1, b2, b3, b4, b5, all the way up to as many b's as there are, let's say it adds up to 17,000, some number. What do the a's have to add up to? Well, if you add up all these a's, they're always less than the b's. So the sum of the a's has to be less than 17,000. So if the sum of the b's converges, the sum of the a's also has to converge. But not only that, it has to converge to a number that's less than whatever the sum of the b's converge to. Right. 
the sum or area of the A's is less than the sum of the B's. So the sum of the A's also has to converge. And the A's have to converge to a value less than the B's. And if I instead tell you that the sum of the A's diverges, then what can you tell me about the sum of the B's? This time around, we're saying that the sum of the A's goes to infinity. So if you add up the areas of all these bars here, this goes to infinity. But the B's are even bigger than the A's. Every B term is bigger than its corresponding A term. So if the smaller A's go to infinity, then you bet that the sum of the B's also goes to infinity. Exactly. If the smaller series diverges, then the bigger series must diverge as well, since the area taken up by the B's is greater than the area taken up by the A's. If the sum of the A's goes to infinity, then the sum of the B's goes to infinity as well. Let's try using this comparison test on an example. Here's the series 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial and so on. Does this series converge or diverge? To find out, we're going to compare it to this series over here. 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 2 to the fourth, and so on, adding up 1 over all the powers of 2. First off, does this series down here converge or diverge? For this bottom series, let's ignore the 1 at the beginning. Let's look at everything else first. We have 1 plus a half plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 2 to the fourth. This is a geometric series because each term is 1 half of the previous term. So r equals 1 half for this geometric series. And geometric series always converge when r is less than 1. So this geometric series converges. And if we add 1 to it, it still converges. Right, it converges. If you ignore this 1 over here, the rest of it is a geometric series, which converges. So this geometric series here converges to a certain number, and if you add 1 to this series, it'll converge to that same number, but plus 1. The point is, this series converges. Now we can use the comparison test that all the terms in one series is greater than all the terms in the other series. Is that the case here? So let's look at each term. The first term is equal in the two of them. And here now we have 1 over 1 and 1 over 1, so the second term is equal. The third term of each series, this one is 1 over 2, and this one down here is 1 over 2. So the third terms are equal. Okay. Now we have 1 over 6 and 1 over 4. So the bottom series is the bigger one, because a fourth is bigger than a sixth. And 1 over 4 factorial is 1 over 24, and this is 1 over 8. So the bottom series is bigger again. Here, this is 1 over 120. 5 factorial is equal to 120. And this is 1 over 2 to the 4th. This is 1 over 16. So the first couple of terms are equal, equal, equal. But for all the later terms, the bottom series has the bigger terms. So when we say that the series on the bottom has the bigger terms, as with this answer here, it means that all the terms in the bottom series are greater than or equal to the terms in the top series. Excellent. Yes, every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in the top series. So now we know that the bottom series converges, and that every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in the top series. So what can you say about the top series? Okay, bottom series converges. Bottom series has the bigger terms. The top series has the smaller terms. So if these bigger terms add up to a certain number, that means that the smaller terms had better also add up to an even smaller number. They can't go off to infinity. So this top series converges. Right. As you found earlier, if a series, like the blue one here, converges, and if all the terms of another series are smaller, like they are for the orange series here, then that smaller series also has to converge. So this series on top has to converge as well. Can you figure out what the sum of this bottom series is?
For this series on the bottom, we have a 1, and then we have a geometric series. 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, and so on. So the sum of an infinite geometric series is the first term, a, over 1 minus the ratio of the terms, which is r. So the first term here is 1, and then r is a half. So 1 over 1 minus a half, this is equal to 2. So this expression here is 2, and we're adding 1 to it. So 1 plus 2 is 3. Right, it's 3. And since each term in the top series is smaller than each term in the bottom series, this top series has to add up to a value that's less than 3. The sum of this top series turns out to be about 2.718. And if you add up the infinitely many terms here, this sum turns out to be E, or Euler's number. So congrats, you just proved that the number E, by this definition, converges to a number less than 3. Okay, last question. Let's switch things up a little bit. Suppose the larger series, shown in blue here, diverges. What can you say about the smaller series? So now we know that the B's, the bigger series, diverges. What can we say about the smaller series? Well, let's look at some examples. Let's say that each term AN is one half of BN. So the A's are all smaller than the B's. They're half of the B's. But if you add up all the B's and they sum up to infinity, then the A's will add up to half of infinity, which is still infinity. So the A's could very well diverge. But if you make the A's really small, a lot smaller than the B's, you could come up with an example where the A's converge. So you really have no idea if this sum of the A's converges or diverges, because it's the smaller series. So it's this choice here. Right. You need more information. And if you know that the smaller series converges, then you can't say whether the larger series converges or diverges. You have a series and you want to use another series to compare it to using the comparison test, pick that other series carefully. Otherwise, you'll end up in a case like this, with not enough information, and the comparison test won't help you at all. Let's take a look at what's called the harmonic series. The harmonic series can be written like this in sigma notation. It's 1 over 1, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 5, and so on. In this tutorial, we'll try to figure out whether the harmonic series converges or diverges. We'll figure this out using the comparison test. Let's compare the harmonic series to another series, which we'll write here in blue. This other series will be 1 over 1, plus 1 over 2, plus two terms that are 1 over 4, plus four terms that are 1 over 8, plus eight terms that are 1 over 16, and so on. For this blue series, what would be the next group of terms after these 1 over 16 terms? So for this series on the bottom, we had two terms that were 1 over 4, four terms that were 1 over 8, eight terms that are 1 over 16. With this progression, next we'll have 16 terms that are 1 over 32, because the number of terms kept multiplying by 2, and also the terms themselves were dividing by 2. So 16 terms of 1 over 32. Okay, now it's time to compare these two series. They have the same first term, 1 over 1, and they have the same second term, 1 over 2. Now if you look at the third and fourth terms, which series is bigger, the top or the bottom? Okay, so which of these two is bigger? A third plus a quarter, or a quarter plus a quarter? Well, both of these have plus one quarter in them, so we can cancel that out. We don't need to compare those. We just want to know which is bigger, a third or a quarter. Let's draw a pie. 
Here's a third of a pie. Yum. And here's a quarter of a pie. Less yum. A third is bigger than a fourth. So that means that a third plus a quarter is bigger than a quarter plus a quarter. Here's the big return. Right. A third plus a fourth is bigger than a fourth plus a fourth. And now let's look at the next four terms, which are the four one-eighths down here. Which set of four terms has the bigger sum? So which of these is the bigger sum? A fifth plus a sixth plus a seventh plus an eighth, or an eighth plus an eighth plus an eighth plus an eighth. Which of these two is bigger? Well, they both have this eighth at the end, which we can ignore. They're equal over there. And now for the remaining terms, a fifth is bigger than an eighth, a sixth is bigger than an eighth, and a seventh is bigger than an eighth. So this is the bigger sum which means this sum here is bigger than this one. Here's our answer. Right, once again, the top series is bigger. Finally, let's look at the 1 16th terms. Which series is bigger when you add up these terms? If you compare the individual terms, they have the same last term, 1 16th, but for all the other seven terms here, which is the seven terms down here, these terms in orange are bigger. So the orange series has the bigger sum. Right. Once again, the harmonic series is the bigger series. It turns out that for every term in both series, the harmonic series is equal or bigger than its corresponding term in the series on the bottom. So let's label the harmonic series as being the bigger series. And this series that we wrote on the bottom is the smaller series. Next, let's find out if this bottom series converges or diverges. We can combine the two one-fourth terms to make a half. We can also combine the four one-eighth terms to make another half. And if you add up all the one-sixteenth terms in this series, what do you get? Well, we said that there were eight of these 1 16th terms. So if we add up eight different 1 16th terms, it's the same thing as multiplying eight by 1 16th, which is equal to eight over 16, which is equal to a half. So adding up these terms down here gives us another half. Exactly, that's another half. And if you add up all the 1 over 32, 1 over 64, and 1 over 128 terms, each of those adds up to another half. So in this bottom series, there are infinitely many halves that we're adding up. So would you say that this series on the bottom converges or diverges? these terms here, we're adding up infinitely many halves. So this series definitely diverges. Now on top of that, you're adding one to it, which doesn't really affect anything. It still diverges. Right, it diverges. If you add up infinitely many halves, the sum goes to infinity. This series, as we've currently written it, also fails the term test. In order for a series to converge, the individual terms have to go to zero, and these just stay at a half. Okay, so this smaller series diverges. What does that tell you about the bigger harmonic series? So if the smaller series diverges, and the harmonic series is even bigger, it also has to go to infinity, or diverge. Right, if the smaller series diverges, then the bigger series has to diverge as well. Great! So you've just proven that the harmonic series diverges.
In this tutorial, we'll talk about what are called P-series, and whether they converge or diverge. A P-series is a sum that looks like this. It's the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p power. As you change this exponent p, sometimes the series will converge, and other times it'll diverge. Let's see an example, when p equals 1. It's the harmonic series. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which you can also write as 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5, and so on. Does the harmonic series converge or diverge? Right, it diverges. Now let's look at another p-series, where the power is a half. So that's 1 over root 1, plus 1 over root 2, plus 1 over root 3, plus 1 over root 4, plus 1 over root 5, and so on. Let's figure out if this series converges or diverges. To do that, let's compare these two series here. Which series has the larger terms? The first term in each of these series is equal to 1. 1 over 1 is 1, and 1 over the square root of 1 is also just 1. 1 half we can write as 0 0.5, and 1 over the square root of 2, the calculator tells us that that's equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2, or 0 0.707 approximately. So this is 0 0.707. You can check each of the additional terms, but what you'll find is that the terms on the bottom are usually greater than the terms on top. Exactly. The bottom series has the larger terms. 1 over root 1 is 1 which is the same as 1 over 1. But all the other terms are bigger in the bottom series. 1 over root 2 is bigger than 1 over 2, 1 over root 3 is bigger than 1 over 3, and so on. So the terms in the bottom series are bigger than those in the top. And if the top series diverges, what does that mean about this series on the bottom? If the smaller series diverges, meaning its sum goes to infinity, and the bigger series has to diverge as well. Yes, it diverges as well. We saw that when p was a half, the series diverges. It turns out that p series diverge for all values of p less than or equal to 1. When p equals 1, you get the harmonic series, which we said diverges. Next, let's look at when p is larger than 1. Let's look specifically at when p equals 2. So that's 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared, and so on. Which of these two series has the bigger terms? Okay, let's compare terms. We have 1 over 1 and 1 over 1 squared. They're both equal to 1, so they're the same. But if you look at all the remaining terms, here we have 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. 1 over 3 squared is 1 over 9. 1 over 4 squared is a 16th, 1 over 5 squared is 1 over 25. For each of the remaining terms, the terms on the top are the bigger ones. Yes, the squares are the smaller terms. So if you know that the harmonic series diverges, and that the squares here are the smaller terms, what can you say about this series down here? So we know that the bigger series diverges, its sum goes off to infinity. What can we say about the smaller series? Well, it could also diverge and go off to infinity. Or it could go to a number, like 17. We actually have no idea what this smaller series will do, so the comparison test is inconclusive here. Exactly right. You can't say whether it converges or diverges. So let's try comparing this to another series. Here's our series of squares, and the series we'll compare it to starts with 1 over 1 squared, and then two terms that are 1 over 2 squared, 
followed by four terms that are 1 over 4 squared, and then eight terms that are 1 over 8 squared, 16 terms of 1 over 16 squared, and so on. Which series has the larger terms here? Okay, let's compare terms. We'll see that some of them are equal. 1 over 1 squared, 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 8 squared. All the terms up here with a power of 2 in the denominator appear in the bottom series as well. But for all the remaining terms, let's look at those. So here we have 1 over 2 squared, which is a fourth, 1 over 3 squared, which is a ninth. And here we have three terms that are all 1 over 16. And here we've got 1 25th, 1 36th, and 1 49th. So for all the remaining terms, the bottom series has the bigger terms. That's the orange series. Right. The bottom series has the bigger terms. Their first terms are equal. But 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 squared is bigger than 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared. And if you look at the next four terms, the bottom series has the bigger sum. And the same goes for all the other terms. So the sum of the bottom series is bigger than the sum of the top series. Now let's combine the two 1 over 2 squared terms. Adding 1 over 2 squared and another 1 over 2 squared gives us 2 over 2 squared. And we can combine the four 1 over 4 squared terms to get 4 over 4 squared. If we keep combining more groups of terms in this series, we get 8 over 8 squared, 16 over 16 squared, 32 over 32 squared, and so on, with higher powers of 2. We can cancel out these numerators with the square and the denominators. So this bottom series is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16, and so on. This is a geometric series. What's its sum? So recall that the sum of an infinite geometric series is a over 1 minus r where a is the first term, so that's 1 here, and r is the ratio between terms, so that's a half in this example. So this sum is equal to a, which is 1, over 1 minus r, which is a half. 1 over 1 minus a half is 1 over a half, which equals 2. So this sum is equal to 2. Yeah. This geometric series adds up to 2, and if it adds up to a finite number, that's what it means to say that the series converges. So if the series with the bigger terms converges, what can you say about this series up here with the smaller terms? So if the bigger series converges to a value of 2, then the smaller series also converges, but it has to converge to a value that's less than 2. Exactly. This series converges, and it has to converge to a number less than 2. If you add up all these terms, which are 1 divided by the squares, it adds up to about 1.6449. And if you add up the infinitely many terms in this series, it turns out to add up to exactly pi squared over 6. So this p series in which the exponent p is 2, converges. You know that the harmonic series diverges. It turns out that the harmonic series is the border between when a p-series converges or diverges. You found that p-series diverge when p is less than or equal to 1. But p-series converge for every p greater than 1. You showed it converges when p equals 2. But even when p equals 1.0000000001, this series will still converge. Here we'll introduce one of the most useful convergence tests, called the ratio test. First, let's look at an example. The series n squared over 3 to the n, from n equals 1 to infinity. What's the first term in this series?
To find the first term in this series, let's plug in the value n equals 1. So we have 1 squared over 3 to the first power, which is equal to 1 over 3, or a third. Right, the first term is a third, then 4 over 9, 9 over 27, 16 over 81, 25 over 243, and so on. The numerators are all the squares, and the denominators are powers of 3, which seem to get bigger even faster than the squares do. So one way to find out if this series converges is to perform a comparison test, where we compare this series to another series. Let's compare it to this series here, 4 over 2 to the n. Which of these two series has the bigger terms? If we do a term-by-term -term comparison, this first term here is 2, this is 1, this is a half, this is a quarter, this is an eighth. Okay, so this looks like a geometric series on the bottom. But 2 is bigger than a third, so this term is bigger. And 1 is bigger than 4 ninths. 9 27 is a third, so a half is bigger, so the bottom wins again. And a quarter versus 16 over 81, it turns out this is bigger, this is bigger. The bottom series always has the bigger terms. Yes, every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in our original series up here. Now, does this series down here converge or diverge? Let's look at this series a little more carefully. It's 2 plus 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth. This is a geometric series. Its first term is 2, and it has a ratio, r, between terms, of a half, which is less than 1. So this geometric series here converges. Exactly. It converges because it's a geometric series. This series happens to converge to 4. Anyway, because the bigger series converges, that means the smaller series must converge as well. Great. So we've used the comparison test to show that our series converges. But sometimes it's not easy to find a good series to compare to. Finding this series here took some careful checking. Most of the time, instead of doing a comparison test, there's another convergence test you can use instead, called the ratio test, which we'll introduce now. For this test, we'll be taking the ratio of neighboring terms in the series. We'll be looking specifically at the n plus 1 term in the series, divided by the nth term. For example, the second term divided by the first term is 4 ninths over 1 third, which is approximately 1.333. The second term is bigger than the first. Let's find the ratio of two later terms in the series, 25 over 243 over 16 over 81. Their ratio is about 0.52, so the fifth term is smaller than the fourth. For the ratio test, we want to look at the limit of this ratio between neighboring terms as n goes to infinity. In other words, if we look at a term in the series that's really, really far down in the series, how much smaller is the next term in the series? Try plugging in a really large value of n to see if you can figure out what this limit is. Okay, let's try a large value of n, like n equals 10. So we're looking for the 11th term in the series divided by the 10th term. We want to find this ratio. Well, the 11th term in the series is 11 squared, which is 121, over 3 to the 11th power. We're getting that from this formula right here. The 10th term in the series is 10 squared, which is 100, over 3 to the 10th power. We want the ratio between these two terms. When we divide by this fraction, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is all equal to 121 over 3 to the 11th times... 3 to the 10th over 100. And this 3 to the 10th cancels out 10 powers of the 3 down here. So this is equal to 121 over 3 times 100, which is 300. Let's use the calculator to see what this equals. 121 divided by 300 is about 0.4. Okay, so this fraction is about equal to 0 0.4. And if you use larger and larger values of n and plug them into this limit, 
you'll find that this approach is one-third. Great. Now let's see if we can prove what this limit is. The nth term in the series is n squared over 3 to the n. To find the n plus 1 term, we can replace all the n's with n plus 1. So the n plus 1 term in this series is n plus 1 squared over 3 to the n plus 1. Try evaluating this limit. Okay, to find this limit, let's first expand this n plus 1 squared in the numerator. n plus 1 squared equals n squared plus 2n plus 1. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1. And now we're dividing by a fraction, which is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocals. That's times 3 to the n over n squared. So we have a 3 to the n plus 1 down here and a 3 to the n up here. So this 3 to the n cancels out n powers of 3 down there. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1 in the numerator. And in the denominator now we have 3n squared. What's this limit equal to? We found in the last hint that this limit is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1 over 3n squared. So as n gets really, really big, the n squared terms dominate, and these 2n and 1 terms don't matter. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over 3n squared. And the n squares cancel. This is equal to the limit of 1 third. So this limit is equal to 1 third. Right. This limit is a third. So the ratio of successive, or neighboring, terms in this series approaches a third. And earlier we found that this series converges. It turns out that whenever the limit of this ratio is less than 1, this series will converge. Well, actually that's not exactly true. Ratios between terms can be negative as well, in which case the terms in the series keep switching off between positive and negative values. So for a series to converge, this ratio should also be greater than minus 1. What's an equivalent way to write these two inequalities here? Okay, so if we call this limit here, let's just call it x. So we have minus 1 is less than x is less than 1. And if you draw that on a number line, here's 0, here's 1, here's minus 1, 2, and minus 2, x has to be inside this range here, between minus 1 and 1. So its absolute value is always less than 1. So you can write the absolute value of x is less than 1. In other words, the absolute value of this expression is less than 1. Exactly. So another way to write this whole expression is to say that the absolute value of this limit is less than 1. So if this inequality is true, the series will converge. If the absolute value of this limit is greater than 1, the series will always diverge. And finally, if this ratio equals 1 or minus 1 exactly, which happens more often than you might like, you can't determine whether the series converges or diverges. You'll have to use another convergence test. These rules are known as the ratio test because they involve the ratio of successive terms in the series. In this tutorial, we didn't prove why the ratio test works. If you've got the time, you can think more about why this test works. It turns out that performing the ratio test is the same thing as performing a comparison test to a geometric series. But if you're more interested in learning the rules of the ratio test, then here they are. Here we'll look at series that are alternating. An alternating sequence or series is one that switches between positive and negative terms, like this one here. 13 is positive, then minus 5 is negative, 
2 is positive, minus 1 is negative, 4 is positive, and the next term here would be negative. Which of the following series is an example of an alternating series? We're looking for a sequence that switches between having positive and negative terms. Here, they're all positive, so that's no good. The second sequence, we have a positive term, a positive term, then a negative term, and a negative term, and then two more positive terms, so it's not quite alternating. Every term has to switch between being positive and negative. Here, we have a positive 1, a negative 2, a positive 3, a negative 4, a positive 5, and a negative 6, so that looks pretty good. This is an alternating sequence. The last one is all negative, so that's also no good. Next, we'll try to figure out when alternating series converge. But first, here's a series that's not alternating. Every term is positive. It's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 over 2n minus 1. So that's 4 plus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths plus 4 sevenths plus 4 ninths, and so on. All the numerators are 4, and the denominators are all the odd numbers. Does this series converge or diverge? This series looks a lot like the harmonic series, so let's start by trying to compare 4 over 2n minus 1 to 1 over n. We can multiply both sides by n, that's a positive number and won't change the inequality, and we can also multiply both sides by 2n minus 1, that also won't change the inequality. So we're left with 4n is either greater than or less than 2n minus 1. Subtracting 2n from both sides gives us that 2n is greater than or less than negative 1. And it's pretty clear that because n is a positive number, the correct sign is the greater than sign. So we should have used a greater than sign here. In other words, 4 over 2n minus 1 is bigger than 1 over n. Well. 1 over n diverges, so if we add up numbers that are strictly bigger than 1 over n, we're going to get something that diverges. Right, this series here diverges. One way to show that is to use the comparison test with the harmonic series, shown here. Each term in the harmonic series is smaller than its corresponding term in the series up here. So because the harmonic series diverges, this series diverges as well, and we can write that the sum of this series is infinity. Let's plot the partial sums on the number line. The first term is 4, and then we're adding 4 thirds to that, and then 4 fifths, then 4 sevenths, and then 4 ninths. The individual terms are getting smaller and smaller, but as you add up infinitely many terms, this sum diverges to infinity. But now let's return to alternating series. Let's make this series alternating by putting a minus sign in front of every other term. Now does this series converge or diverge? Let's plot the partial sums on the number line again. Again, the first term is 4. Next, we're subtracting 4 thirds from that, so we move back to here. Then we're adding 4 fifths, and then subtracting 4 sevenths, and next we add 4 ninths. If we keep adding and subtracting more terms, this series will converge to a point right around here. It turns out that this series converges to the number 3.14159, etc. Does this number look familiar? Yes, this alternating series here converges to pi. As a general rule, Every alternating series converges if its individual terms approach zero. Another way to say that the terms are approaching zero is to say that the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth term in the series is zero. Take a look at this alternating series that converged up here, where the magnitude of the nth term is 4 over 2n minus 1. This limit goes to zero, and so this series up here definitely converges.